We went to the woods to see if somebody was coming towards the village. And the woods are very close to the house. We had this illusion that we were some brave people who could defend the village. We all did our national service and we should have known by this point in time it was impossible to, to defend against this huge armed force but I guess it's just your instinct you want to defend your home so we came here Next to those woods, there's a road and I spotted two soldiers walking with, you know, with their rifles and they just walked confidently in this direction along that road and there was this real tension in the air. We knew something was going to happen, we just It was hard to accept it. We, we were not military uh, strategists. When you attack, you use roads. You don't attack through the woods. You know, tanks roll on roads. And that's exactly what happened. Three tanks rolled towards the village, you know, because there were three roads leading to the village. And um, soldiers followed behind tanks. We were ready for the slaughter. You know, we were attacked because we were Muslims, because it was a Serb plan to claim this part of the country for themselves. So in, in that sense, what happened here was not personal. Uh, people who targeted me from the above. On the other hand, it was so personal when it, when it came to the people who attacked us, because I recognized many soldiers. And then, of course, neighbors came from behind the hedge. After we surrendered all the weapons and ammunition, then Tsigo, he started calling out, calling out names. And I, I realized very quickly that every name was associated with Croatia, that they worked in Croatia. And I thought, oh, they're going to call Kasim as well. They took these individuals then inside the school. The school window was open, so you could hear the clatter of chairs and tables and screams. These guys were tortured in, inside the school. Then they, somebody came out, called another name, and another person went in. And uh, later I learned that, you know, to drown out all this noise, they were stuffing some kind of rubber inside uh, their mouths. A, a Seb TV crew arrived. They set up the whole scene. They were like dishing out bean soup, even gave some juice in Tetra Pak to kids. And they made Sher village to speak to their camera and he said he was well treated but what do you say in those conditions <laughs> it, it it was quite clear it was so well planned because buses were arranged and each bus had an escort less than 48 hours later i was inside yamarska camp i went back to bosnia for the first time 10 years after the village was attacked. Accidentally it happened on the 10th anniversary of the attack on the village. There was nothing left of the, of the village. Just grass and rubble. There, there was a small forest in the front garden. And I became severely traumatized by seeing what, what, what all this physical destruction, because when I left the village it was still intact. 
I have entertained a thought ever since to, to return to Bosnia. I spend quite a lot of time in Bosnia these days. I kind of live bet between two, two worlds and it's quite strange, quite funny.